Over 60 men were killed in the worst special operations disaster in modern Residents history. Residents of Coronado, California, were shocked by the brutal murder of Lauren Reese and her three-year-old daughter. Navy SEAL Lieutenant home. Commander James Reese survived the ambush but is under investigation. Welcome to the Terminal List Podcast, an Ironclad original series presented by veteran-owned and operated Kansas City Cattle Company. I'm Jack Carr, author of the Terminal List. On each episode, we break down a different episode from the Terminal List series on Amazon Prime, starring Chris Pratt. On today's show, we're looking at the third episode, Consolidation. Amazing. I am joined by two of my dear friends, showrunner, David DiGilio. And for those who don't know what a showrunner is, that is like the singular point of contact for everything that happens in a series. So like a director is in a uh, feature film, a showrunner is managing multiple directors, a writer's room. David is also the lead writer on this and uh, an incredible human being to boot. And Jared Shaw right here, the man who made all this possible by handing the book to Chris Pratt back in November of 2017 before the book was even published. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here and for all your efforts over the last few years bringing this book to the screen, bringing it to life. Man, thank you. Could not thank be you. More thrilled. Amazing. And we're talking about episode three. So 103 for uh for those that, uh, that know how you do uh, television, season one, when we say 103, it means season one, episode three. So that's how that, uh, that breaks down here. Um, man, episode three. What stands out to you guys about episode three? I know something that stands out to, to me about it, and we'll get to that uh, eventually. But we have Reese burning things uh, as, as we start the episode. Um, we have Secretary of Defense Hartley uh, get a little bit more into her character at the Pentagon. Um, and man, I just love Jean Triplehorn. When you told me, Dave, when you Ooh, texted me yeah. that like, we were that uh, she was interested or that you'd reached out yeah. or however that that worked, yeah. I was like, no way. The perfect person to play this role. How did that, how did her casting come about? Oh man, we love Jean because she has that uh, combination of strength, of intelligence, of beauty, and really like compassion, which yeah. is really interesting because that was the thing I think I talked to you early on in terms of the the Hartley character. I was like. Oh, I think we're going to have some compassion here, yeah. which is going to make this very interesting, this relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's one of those little surprises that we baked into this. And so Jean, when we met with her, we just saw Hartley. Yeah. And and although I will say, you know, Jean is somebody who who works very hard on the research side and is very into the look of this character, you know, as she embodies and brings something to life. And, and, um, I remember uh, she was working working with our uh, key uh, hair, our head of hair, uh, Jean, uh, who sent a photo, and she had changed Jean Triplehorn's entire look just by this haircut, and everybody was like, "Boom! Wow! There's Hartley! Incredible!" And it's it's amazing how just the framing of a face of a jawline. And that's, a, that's what we we're talking about in terms of that transition from the page to the screen, the visual storytelling. Yeah. She gave her this haircut that just, boom, strength, just step forward. And then because Hartley comes from uh, not only a military background, but a multi-generational military background, mm -hmm. that was something that Gene got very into on the research side, yeah. is reaching out and talking to the children of warriors who had come home. And how that had affected uh, life at home, because we we do you know dive into you know we keep things everybody you know we keep things hidden for a little yep. bit, so we dive into this notion of PTSD, mm -hmm. traumatic brain injury, and the notion of war that follows a soldier or sailor home, physically yeah. and mentally. And she really wanted to dive deep on that. And I so appreciate uh, the research she did uh, in that role. Yeah. And when, she, when you texted me that she, I mean, 
we, she reached out right away and we're talking, we became fast friends and she's yeah. such a fantastic human being, you know, off screen as well. Like I just, uh, I just love her and, mm -hmm. uh, and what an amazing person. And, and it's uh, the friendships that I made throughout this whole process are, uh, yes. are really what stand, what stand out to me, you know, uh, it was such a, a, a special process, uh, at every single stage, you know, yes. inception, development, production, writing the whole, the whole thing, uh, was just, just so cool. And we get to know Katie a little more. Get a little background into her. Oh, you add a little yes. little gambling element there, a little poker playing yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, the guy who plays Jordan. I oh, mean, Arturo Castro. Oh, what a find. Oh, my goodness. I, uh, what a I was find. so bummed I didn't get to meet him at the premiere. I saw oh, he was there man. afterward because he was so busy. Oh, I'm like, God. God, I can't believe that guy was here. I didn't get to say thank you to him. Um, yeah. It, what it, a great... This is, <laughs> yeah, he, he's a great find. And, um, you know, Chris, as an, an executive producer on this, one thing he's very good with is casting. Mm. And um, he and his uh, partner um, in the production company while they were making this show, John Schumacher, they were the ones that put Arturo mm. up for this role because we had imagined somebody much older. Yeah. Somebody much older. We imagined kind of like a f surrogate father to Katie because Katie, you know, she right. had and, and we took the Katie from the book and ran with it. Right. Which is like. And, and I know the Katie from the book, very inspired by uh, Katie Pavlich, uh, tenacious, Maybe. right? Maybe. Allegedly, allegedly. It's, allegedly never, it's never been right? confirmed. Yeah. Never been it's, confirmed. It's amazing, right? But just, just freaking on it. Tenacious, tenacious, tenacious. And Constance Wu came into our world, interested in playing this role. And we're like, boom, tenacious. And because we'd seen a little bit of this in Hustlers. She mm. plays somebody who's got some baggage really well. And so we love this idea that Katie, and we could open this up because we're in, in series here, uh, has a history of pursuing the truth, but also maybe running from her problems. Mm. And we love baking this into her relationship with the editor, uh, Jordan, mm -hmm. who knows he's taking a risk on this war correspondent. And, and thank you, Jack. Some something people don't know is that you came in to the writer's room because we would have research Wednesdays in the writer's room. So you were the first um, person who came in. And then uh, soon after that, we had a, a real life war correspondent come in and tell us huh. about the insanity of living that lifestyle, mm. of being embedded with troops, of being in war zones. It's a very complicated relationship. Jared, we've talked a little bit about this. It is a very complex relationship. And Constance just, I think, nails that part of Katie. She's like as compelled as Reese. As Reese is compelled for vengeance, she is compelled for truth and accountability. But damn, she's got some problems. <laughs> and you start to see that here in episode three. She's in this crazy um, outlet uh, online outlet, Volt Stream, um, kind of may may or may not be inspired by BuzzFeed, but you know this idea of like, are they a serious news outlet or not? She's not so sure, but she knows she has maybe the biggest story ever, and she has a massive turn, or helps create a massive turn in this episode for James Reese. Yeah, she's the one who reveals. That he has a brain tumor. Yep. Yep. And we loved the the part of this episode where, you know, we have been questioning this guy. Is he crazy or is there a conspiracy? And the answer is a little bit of both because of what's been done to him. Mm -hmm. And we start to open it up and peel back that layer in this episode. And it starts in L.A., with the meeting between Katie Burnett and James Reese and the reveal of that tumor. And then little cameo, interesting cameo. Interesting comes in cameo. Right we can talk about it now, you know, and it's, <laughs> yeah. uh, man, it was so cool of, uh, of you guys to involve me like that. And, uh, you know, uh, just beyond cool. I love filming that scene. Cause when you're, when I'm watching it, when I'm watching all these things on set and I have that director's chair thing, which is a cool thing, you know, for me, for a new person to have that and then have the screen yeah. and your thing and you're watching and you're taking notes and you're kind of yeah. observing what everybody's doing and how they're doing it. And, um, it was so cool. But then to go in front of the camera 
and then to have the people put the blood on you and to see how they put bullet holes in windows um, yeah. and to have a person double you who doubled Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon, one of my favorite ah. movies ever. Like, are you kidding me? How crazy yeah. is that? Uh, oh, I still think yeah, you should have yeah. let me crash the car. Uh, oh, my like, God. Uh, you know, and cut. How and hard, then he goes how, in and boom. How you know? hard was it for you to see the Land Cruiser get crashed? Well, I, I thought it was going to be a lot harder, but because yeah. of the way they put that uh, rear bumper on and the swing arm yeah. for the tire, like that thing yep. is bomber. That yeah, thing bomber. is yeah. friggin' solid. It's now in my yeah. driveway. Uh, yep. <laughs> but they rammed that thing, and it was like no issue. I mean, I yeah. forget if they put in a little explosive charge on the water uh, in the, to no, make it a go. No, I think that was natural. It. I I think it I, yeah. It just smashed. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool to, uh, to see that and also to see the Land Cruiser essentially walk away unscathed. I mean, they get it like bend uh -huh. a little beast, arc, you know, but the other car, you know, it was just like your normal everyday, you know, Osmo Buick type of a thing. Um, like that thing was done. <laughs> hammered. <laughs> Not going anywhere. Hammered. Yeah. That thing was completely done. Um, oh. but that was so cool to be there and then to walk through it with Chris and, uh, Jared, we have some great pictures with Chris out there and we're talking about the pistol and we're talking about making sure hand positions, right. Thumbs are right. You know, all that stuff. Um, and then to see him just embrace it and rock it and, uh, and do it right there um and uh across the street from a very special number to you which was very cool i have a picture of you and chris standing next to uh, that which is pretty amazing um but then to be there and see how you do the the makeup and the blood and the whole thing i mean man yeah it's just and, beyond cool and you jack stepping in you know and, and with a scene like that how much goes yeah. into that you know and, and cold board you went in there and you did it and i mean one one and done you you crushed it you know and, and people wow. yeah people always think being in front of the camera that have never done it like oh that's easy that's you know no big deal and and you obviously have some time in front of the camera but i don't think in that capacity no you know doing something certainly like not. that certainly yeah. not although it wasn't that much of a stretch being an assassin uh, uh, interesting, no. interesting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, let's edit that out in case it ever is. Exactly. You know, yeah. <laughs> don't point to exhibit A. I hope my, my lawyers might freak yeah. out. Uh, uh, but that, you know, so it wasn't much, too much of a stretch in that regard. But what was so cool is just seeing how it's done, seeing how it's filmed, having MJ Bassett there, who uh, was Strike yes, Back, director, has a great uh, director, you know, MJ background Bassett. in action. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and she was fantastic. But uh, yeah, doing that hit, being in the car, having a gunfight. I mean, Amazing. Yeah. It's all the stuff you want to do growing up. But the hardest part of that scene was not breathing afterward right. when Ooh. you're dead. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you've like, you've been in this firefight, I'm drawing my weapon, there's bullets coming in, there's for you know, there's ball bearings through the window, you know, and they move the yep. seat so you're not gonna get the get you know the the shards of glass and all that stuff. Um, but, uh, but still you've just been like in this scene and you're playing it and you're like, This is awesome, but then you gotta be dead, but you're really not, because you're really like yeah. <laughs> obviously. But you can't breathe because they got to do a close up. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I have this like adrenaline rush. This is so awesome. But then you got to like, huh, and I'm holding my breath and Chris is going through and I'm like, hurry it up, buddy. You know, like, <laughs> the, the file's right there. You know, like, just grab it. You know, it's, it's right there. It's your photo. Oh, um, yeah, so, it. but he's checking it there, you know, going through yeah. my wallet and all those things. Yeah. And I'm just like holding my breath. Uh, and uh, now it was fantastic. That was so cool to, uh, to be involved and to do that uh, the way we did it. And, you know, I didn't have too much of a wardrobe change. I think it was just actually, you know, my, my normal, yeah, normal. Clothes, so. Yeah. But that's exactly what I'm talking right. about. That's what I'm talking about. Like the, the being in front of the camera and especially something like that can control of your body when you're mm -hmm. with the camera sees everything yeah. you know that doesn't miss a thing and so you stepped in there so very naturally and did it and crushed it you know and then we have chris on the other end on the tactical side like you said y'all getting this gunfight you know and you're you're throwing rounds back and forth and chris comes up shoots and then does that that tack reload you know and yeah. and ray mendoza all the credit in the world to him on that one and i think uh, Jack, you helped him out as well, just kind of showing him that that reload, the smoothest way to do it. Then press checks it, you know, and then goes in there, grabs a file, and leaves. And it all plays so so smooth uh, when it's you know, it's just people are gonna love that. You know, oh, people man. are gonna see that Too one cool. and love it. 
Yeah. And the Land Cruiser has a starring role. Uh, and what I really wanted to do in that scene, working it out with Chris, was like, yeah. no, you've shot me through glass. And when bullets go through glass, they do different things. Because every, yes. every windshield's at a little different angle. You're at a different height. You know, you're, depending on what bullets you, you know, what, what cartridges you have in there, it's like, you know, you're gonna, the bullet's going to do a different thing when it hits that window, depending on what it is and how heavy it is and how fast it's going. And there's so many variables in a gunfight. Um, and I call it the atmospherics of a gunfight. Um, so I'm like, after you shot me through this window, like you have to take this angle and put two more in my head as you approach because you know those bullets could have come in and it looks like yeah they're going through here but who knows yep. where they're going and where they're hitting and and all that so you got to go around and you got to put two more in my head as you approach to make sure that's what a professional is going to do you're not just going to walk up and then reach across someone who you haven't confirmed is already dead so um so that was cool you know that we did those things and in that first scene in 101 uh jared in that in that fight scene in the uh, mri oh, yeah. clinic yeah. uh you know he turns and boom puts another one in the head of that assassin that's down but yep. there are a lot of people who have been killed by others they thought uh -huh. they were dead in war yep. and uh mm -hmm. and james reese knows that and he's a professional and so he turns and he takes that other shot before moving past so i love those little things like that that made it in um and uh in this scene was uh was similar to that and then he had to make sure that i was down before he approaches reaches across goes through my wallet grabs that um that file gets back in the land cruiser and goes and then something else happens next and man, I, it, once again, cutting room floor, it, you had to kill your babies because I love that we put James Reese in the Land Cruiser and now he needs to steal a car. He needs a, he oh, needs yeah. a vehicle. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, I've been to a, went to a, a car stealing school back in 1999 or something like that. But uh, they went through all the different types of vehicles and which ones are easier to steal than others yeah. and how you do it. And each one you do yeah. it a little differently um, and, you know, in, 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 in movies, a lot of the time you get into the car and you reach under the dash and it starts and then you come yep. back up, you know, something, something magical happened under the yep. dash and then you're, you're ready. But really in real life, different cars, you have to do different things. So, uh, and then Ray came in, Ray Mendoza and you guys figured out what kind of a car. So we have James Reese driving and he's looking, you know, Katie doesn't know what he's looking at. She's in the car next to him, but he's going through this parking garage and he's looking around and he sees something and he stops and he pulls back and he takes another look. And then, so he's looking for a particular type of vehicle that he knows how to steal, that he has the tools to enter and start. And yep. uh, it's an old, in this case, I think it was a Chevy, or it was an old, old pickup truck. Yeah. Old and pickup. Uh, so it goes there. And, and we, so we had to take out all of that, you know, <laughs> the driving, the looking, the identifying, oh, the going up, the start, you know, breaking in the correct way, uh, yeah. all of it gone, all uh, of it gone. I mean, cut, we cut deep. Yeah, it, I cut it, deep it, on that one, but uh, you know, uh, I know it exists. You know what it is. That's important. And, we put in the hat, hat tip to uh, the episode's writer, uh, Daniel Shattuck, is uh, um, one of my um, top writers in the room, is an EP on the show. Uh, and he got way into that. I don't know who, if he spoke to you or Ray or Jared. Like, he was way, way into the tradecraft oh, good. of that. Yeah, nice. fantastic. Love, love the tradecraft side of it. And, and then, uh, and, and then, then it got it, cut. And then it gets cut. That's what happens sometimes. That's but what I do happens. love that. I still love that scene. Yeah. And I love pulling the Land Cruiser in and transferring the things oh, over and having yes. that conversation with Katie and then Katie mm -hmm. making that decision. Um, mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, I'm going to find out, you know, I'm going to find the truth. Um, man, that was cool. That, was, that yeah. whole thing was that whole thing was fun. Uh, just just super fun to, to film. Um, and then we get Steve Horn. Oh man. Yeah, and Jack there he is Courtney. with my, our buddy, Mikey Jack Sowers of Forged, And, hmm. uh, they're running through this, uh, this building and Ray's in that, uh, in that scene as well. And, uh, you know, how cool is that? And then you get through it and you find out, Hey, it's just some like, you know, want to be business executive guy who <laughs> likes to touch the magic is so much so that he has tattoos and, and, uh, the whole, the whole deal. And Jai Courtney, man, there is, I cannot imagine somebody else playing Steve Horn. Oh, dude. Um, yeah. yeah. In He's my incredible. mind, when I wrote it, I had him as a little older. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and now I'm like, Oh man. So wait I don't to know go. If, cause I, I yeah, yeah, I don't know if I should say who I had in, in mind uh, to play him, but uh, Maybe Jai not. crushes. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, I could could not have been better. Could not have been better as Steve he really, He Just really he really does. And, and, and I think in the book, right, it's shotguns and that we find them uh, using. They're shooting. Um, and then we were like, as we you know, got more and more into this character and what capstone yeah. industry did. He's doing a little sporting Do clays in the, in yeah, the sporting clays. Exactly. And, um, and so as we got into the notion of horn and, um, capstone industries and the fact that like, this is a guy who thinks 
he's as capable as the men he helps equip. Mm -hmm. And we were like, oh, that's interesting. Like yeah, the guy yeah, who kind of fanboys fanboys out, and um, and you guys, I'm sure you know, have met met guys like that. Uh, dealt Never. with some of them, and <laughs> and you can see where the where the respect is genuine, and then where it comes from, an odd place. And mm. I think Horn lives in that space, right? And so we love the notion of like live fire drill in a shoot house, and. Damn, Jared, that, were you out there that day? Because that one I know was a brutal one for him. I was not on set, but it was a full day out in the heat. In the house, you're saying? Yeah, in the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because remember Ray, Ray, like we talked about, is in the scene. Yes. You know, so Ray couldn't, Ray usually is behind the monitor tech advising, and I'm just filling in where I need to. So since yeah. Ray was running and gunning. I was, I was covering down on, on the tech advising, you know? And so, yeah, I mean, we were there and, and, you know, we also had Mikey Sowers in on that one former seal, you know, and he comes and breaches a door, you know, I think you, yeah. you call him the, the beard master. Beard Dave. master. <laughs> yeah. So we <laughs> had him in there. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. So had him in there as well. And, um, you know, so those guys flowed and Jai did so well, I think we'd taken him to the range maybe only once, possibly huh. twice leading yeah. up to that. But man, he's one of them guys. He's just athletic, smart, picks yeah. it up quick. And he's physical. He's a big guy, you know, yeah. six, six, one, six, two, probably 240 pounds, you know, and he just looks the part, you know, and then put a gun in his hand and he could move. He did well with it. You know? it was very professional. Yeah. yeah. So many Look. people reach out after those trailers dropped and uh, there's everyone, every single person has been like Jai Courtney, Steve Horn. Perfect. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I love that introduction because you introduce him in a world that he wants to be in, and then you find him in the world where he lives, right? Yeah. And those two sides of the character just smush right together, boom. Mm -hmm. And I think we used to open that episode with the shoot house, Jared, right? And and Jack, do you remember this? Like the early scripts, I feel I think like that's why I'm conflating them in my head because I was yeah. I was like, yeah. did we yeah. start with I that think or we is it after? Actually, we used to start with it, and um. And, and Chris and Antoine, I think, were the ones who were like, you know what? If we hold that, we can keep the audience questioning mm -hmm. Reese all the way through the gunfight yeah. with Jack. And it's only in finding the target package that you go, he's right. Uh -huh. and, it, and that's when we made the move. And we shifted it into uh, the first scene after the gunfight in Los Angeles introducing mm. horn and then introducing sean gunn oh sean gunn. Saul i mean another perfect perfect wow. could, i mean perfect and what a cool guy finally i, I was not on set oh, during his scene so i got to yeah. meet him at the premiere what a great guy i mean incredible and he crushes this role i mean crushes uh, it incredible oh, amazing dave do you remember how that one that one came about Chris I, and I, yeah, we were flying to uh, to Australia for, you know, what we talked about previously, yeah. the, the four week trip, two weeks in quarantine. And and Sean is on the flight. It's the Guardians crew. And yeah. we're sitting there talking and all that. And Chris looks over at me and he's like, this is Saul Agnon. This is yep. who needs to play Saul Agnon. You know, and I looked at it and I'm like, I looked at, at Sean and I nailed it. Like that's who it's got to be, you know, it's obviously months later that we cast him, but yeah, that was it. Chris saw it in the beginning. And that was one of those moments, that scene between those two, where, like I talked about previously, like when you're watching a moment happen and you know, in that moment, it's special. You forget that you're watching a scene take place. That was one of those moments between those two where I'm like, oh, wow. Wow. You know, amazing, truly amazing. When Saul and uh, and uh, and Steve are in the in the building in the Capstone building, no, 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 no. He's talking about the, oh, the ending. The he's jumping to the end. It might end. be a little early to go <laughs> go to that, but uh, it's, I'm telling he's you, I'm right so, to the end. Jared. I'm so excited about it. You know that it's uh, it's so it, great. You mean on yeah. the flight that moment when you realized that he was going to be uh, going to play Saul? No, the 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 moment between Reese oh, and between uh, Reese. Okay. Agnon. Yeah, 
We'll jump into the end later. of the episode. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I yeah. Know. jump just, in right I, there, I, Jared. Come on, Jared. Come on, I, come on I'm Jared. excited. I can't help it. I know. Oh, it's awesome. Man. It is awesome. <laughs> and once again, there's differences between the book and the series. And, yeah. uh, you know, I hope that people don't just, uh, that are fans of the book, don't watch yeah. it with book in hand and just mark off the differences and not like it because there are differences. Uh, so at every turn, you know, I try to, through social media and engagement, uh, you know, talk about those differences and how they complement the book uh, yes. rather than detract from it, which is, I mean, that's the art form right there, because in many cases that uh, we could all point to, uh, the opposite has happened. Uh, yep. When there's a fan base for a book and the changes detract from that foundation and uh, and it really leaves the fans uh, upset, wanting more, yeah. disappointed. And in this case, man, I could not be more thrilled with these changes uh, because now you're not just watching a visual representation of the book and you already had that in your mind anyway. And everyone yeah. who reads it will have a little bit different picture, which is yeah. a, a challenge when you, when it comes to every single person who reads something, having a little bit of a different picture because they're bringing a life experience to that reading or now listening experience. And now they're seeing it visually something put together by a team. So it's a, it's very interesting, but uh, I think all these changes complement and yeah. also gives the reader or the fan of the books uh, surprises that uh, that complement and add to, meaning we're yeah. adding value to their life because they're getting not just getting exactly what was in the book, they're yeah. getting something more. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I love that. And uh, certainly the case with uh, with Steve Horn, that's going to be a big one for, for people because uh, he doesn't get killed the same way he does in the novel. And that's going to throw people off because it's yeah. like, oh, like there's some differences, there's some similar, yeah. you know, there's things that are grounded. If you're a fan, you can like point to things here and there, but then wow, what happens in episode Surprise. 104. Like, yeah. so that's great. But yeah. um, but this one, I love this. And we get some golf in there. Chris loves oh, golf. We get yes. some golf. I mean, the music, the score, uh, like everything that's that's happening in this episode is so cool. One in particular, Taylor Kitsch playing Ben Edwards is there with his like, you know, we got his title, his whatever that golf hat on. And, yeah. and uh, boom, golf ball gets hit and every head swings and his stays locked on target i'm like oh i love that scene i love that uh, moment who made yeah who whose call was that dave i don't remember it who i, I think that was in the original script um from, from dan i think it really? i think it was yeah and, that was um, a moment mm -hmm. yeah it's a great moment and and you know jack speaking to what you just uh touched upon like the best way um to think about it is like while story points might change um and, and pieces of characters might change, the soul of them remains the same. And there's, you know, in your forward, you have, this is a book about revenge, mm -hmm. right? This is a series about revenge. And you also have, this is a book about control. Mm -hmm. And man, this episode is about control. Mm -hmm. In 102, we saw Reese very much out of control, right? The, the tumor things going on in his brain, turned up to 11 here here he's trying to stay in total control and everybody in their own orbit is trying to stay in total control mm. right horn is controlling agnon agnon is controlling the deal mm -hmm. between tedesco and ryberg tedesco by the way that's an interesting you know one to touch upon yeah Different character, yeah. but the soul is the same. He yeah. is the conspirator in the book who is the most conflicted. Yep. So we took that idea and folded it into this pharmaceutical company, Nubellum, that's related to Project RD4895. Mm -hmm. And there you go. The soul of the book fuels everything that we do in the writer's room. And again, really, you know, thematically, you got to look at every episode. This one's consolidation. Consolidation is that moment where you actually settle the experience into mm -hmm. memory. And this is the moment where Reese is settling from the craziness of the, of the first act of the, of the season and turning into this conspiracy thriller, this revenge thriller, mm -hmm. and starting to lock in on his targets. So all about control, including 
that incredible final scene that that Jared jumped us to five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help it, guys. I know. It's, I mean, I love that. We have to, I uh, mean, everybody's so good, and I love the deal making. I love, yeah, you know, Saul played by Sean Gunn, who crushes it. But in every interaction at that golf tournament, trying to close this deal, it's so oh, slimy, man. and it's just so like, oh, oh my gosh, he's playing to the, it. it it's yeah. so good. It's so yeah. all these guys, all these guys um, are, are just incredible. And uh, I guess before we go to that final scene uh, in in this episode, we have a we have a, a gentleman scene club. And it's a, a strip. Oh, yeah. 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 That, um, that's from the book. Yeah, that is. I had to do a lot of research for that. Yeah. Um, I hadn't been in many, many strip clubs, so I had to go and really put in some time to really capture Good. the essence Good of those on places. You. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, know, you, you really have to devote yourself yeah. to your work and make sacrifices. Um, Sorry you, know, you had to so do that. that. I, know. I know that was rough. I yeah. Know. I know it was pretty pretty tough, but, you know, you do what you have to for these, uh, right. these projects. Um, yep. So I really wanted, to, <laughs> really wanted to capture that. Um, <laughs> but but, uh, but it was really cool how that comes across in this. And, and what I was so impressed with, by the way, as well, was how – it was filmed that particular yeah. scene. And I can, in my head think about how would they have filmed this in like 1965, 1975, 1985. I bet it would have been a little bit different. Um, yeah. but everything was like, was so respectful, uh, to everybody involved. And that, and that really stood out to me as I, oh, yeah. I don't think I thought much about it heading in, but when I got there, I was like, Oh, I wonder how this is, is going to go and have it be so professionally done. Um, yeah. but it did make me think like it probably has not always been this way in Hollywood. It hasn't been that way. That's a, that's a great, by the way, great point, Jack. I mean, you know, we've come a long way with stuff like that. Uh, and big hat tip to, um, Dan Shattuck and Max Adams, uh, who were the writers who stayed on to produce, uh, these episodes with us. And, um, and Max, I think knew a lot of the women who we cast in that, uh, in that scene. And, um, and I think, you know, there's another cool thing on the music side. Um, one of the women, uh, Fox, we used her song, Oh wow! That's the song that's that. playing. She's yep. a she's a musician. No way. So like, yeah, the it's notion and 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 then, um, and I apologize. I'm blanking on the actress's name. I'll see if I can Raven? grab it. Uh, Raven. Yeah, dude. Amazing. She's incredible. Uh, yeah. Amazing. Like, incredible. Uh-huh. One yep. of the best little character scenes yep. in, uh, in the show. Um, that's what they call in the industry a day player because mm. she's only coming in for one day for one scene. Okay. And just knocks it out of the park, and Chris in there, and amazing, you know. And and it's slightly different than the book in that um, we know why he's going for the methadone in the book because we have access to his internal monologue. Right. And in the show, when you're just watching it play out, you have a little question of: Is he? Yeah, what's he doing? Is there? he actually getting this yep. for his yep. headaches? Like what? What? Right. And then in that great final scene comes back the payoff the payoff and um but but it is a tremendous hat tip to again another crucial member of the of the whole team our our casting uh company um really mary vernu uh her her associate sydney they rocked it on this show Mm -hmm. i I basically throw jared in there because he helped cast so many people (laughs) as well um but it is a massive part of the whole fabric of a show is finding those people who are just so naturally fit for for that role like mm-hmm. it, it's it's incredible. So that 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 was a, a money scene and so amazed with how MJ shot it. Mm-hmm. Armando Salas the DP and one other little tip. What is the kind of color wash of that scene? Well, get you the, remember the color? Well, I remember the reds in the beginning. Red. You know, I remember red. all that. That certainly stands out with the music so, right at once yeah. and the way it's filmed. Like, I yeah. love that. I'll, that's, that so, totally stands out to me. So so red is an interesting color in the show. So that's just a little like the people who find this podcast and, and, and look beneath the hood will we'll be able to go back and look and see when red shows up, kind of what's going on. It's very interesting. The Terminal List podcast is presented by Kansas City Cattle Company. Kansas City Cattle Company believes in keeping things authentic, and they believe if you taste the product, you'll taste the difference. Kansas City Cattle Company is veteran-owned and operated and delivers Wagyu beef and other high-quality proteins with a palatable difference to all 50 states. They have Brookshire pork 
pasture-raised chicken sourced from another veteran-owned company and sustainably caught seafood. They're also known for their world-famous Wagyu hot dog, which was featured by foodandwine.com in a viral article saying they had found a hot dog that tasted like steak. Other best sellers are their Wagyu steak, briskets, and tri-tip roasts. There's also been buzz about their Wagyu bacon cheeseburger brats. Other favorites include Wagyu hanger steak, Wagyu bone-in ribeye, and their Wagyu chuck eye steaks. The team started Kansas City Cattle Company to bridge the gap in high-quality proteins and top-notch animal husbandry practices to the end consumer. They believe good protein starts with good conditions for the animals. As the company grew, they hired their first employee, a veteran, just getting out of the Army. From there, their new mission to hire an all-veteran staff was born. Today, their mission now includes serving high-quality protein to those they once served and helping other veterans find their new mission post-service. Save 15% on the exclusive terminal list collection at kccattlecompany.com slash jackcar with code jackcar15. That is J-A-C-K-C-A-R-R-15. That's K-C Cattle Company, K-C-C-A-T-T-L-E-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y.com slash jackcar, J-A-C-K-C-A-R-R. And use that code Jack Carr, 15. Ah, ah, so that was very intentional. It wasn't just, I mean, I, I, when I was in there, I was like, oh, everything's red. Uh, you know, yeah. like, uh, you know, the seats, the velvet or whatever, like in there, like it, it kind of played to that, yeah. but it really stands out different Everything, from how yeah. the other scenes are, uh, are playing. Yeah, no, this is, you know, what Antoine refers to as that visual literacy, mm. right? Like it's the language of film. So everything that's picked to be in frame is there for a, for a reason and the color red big time it's amazing. wild amazing amazing that that's so intentional on that part you know and then we get boozer boozer's back boozer's back <laughs> do people know it's boozer that's my question that, that's that's what i was going to say nobody is going to have any idea we yeah. we we had the idea yeah like you know what it's supposed to be you know previous looking younger so i'll shave my face and that's i haven't sh clean shaven in years and that made me realize i never want to clean shave again because <laughs> never I, again it was I, like it, a kid yeah it just it didn't it, it's boozer in the scene everybody yeah. that's watching this yeah. doesn't know it's boozer in the scene because it's, it's boozer not in the scene. It, yeah it's uh, come uh, on boss and, yeah and patrick schwarzenegger <laughs> yeah. is in there again yep. uh you know he's in that AJ AJ first episode and aj james is in there so yeah. uh you know those guys are are back uh we didn't talk about patrick in that first episode either oh man. about that that run and Dude. that camera is it a phantom is that the kind of camera that we're capturing that yes, slow motion phantom. run with the yeah. phantom super and you're slow having him run super and that look on his camera. face as he's running like that is awesome i remember seeing that because i was on set that day and uh yeah. to see that that was pretty that was pretty cool oh it was so yeah. cool when we filmed the freak out you know because yeah. patrick had been in there doing his movement with you guys you guys have put him through the paces Oh, yeah. Definitely put him through the paces. <laughs> mm -hmm. But he was there, you know, for a real reason, which is that moment uh, where Donnie actually loses it. And we play that, you know, at the end of 101 when Reese gets full recall yep. of that moment. And dude, Patrick yeah. crushed that. Yeah. Oh, and so speaking of solid. speaking of Patrick, uh, the head. Talk about the head Ooh. for a second. Like it's oh, yeah. uh you know, it's it's there, it's in the scene. Obviously, it's in it's in the book. I have a head in a helmet that James Reese picks up and he needs that, yeah. he needs that that helmet. Um and uh and in the in this show we have this very realistic looking head that James Reese comes comes to and sees this head. Um that, do you remember how many hours it took? He had to sit there or something. And it was like a, like a laser yeah. going around his Full head, like cast. measuring yeah, everything. You do or everything. Yeah. It's a massive, you know, it's like we have special effects, um, which is uh, the, the practical effects that are in the show that was led by Jimmy Lorimer. But then you have special effects makeup mm. and that's uh, the, the makeup department working with special vendors um, to recreate uh Real, I mean, an incredible yeah. replica of Patrick's head. Right. And there's maybe a little bit of help with visual effects in the final shot, but it's mainly that prosthetic. 
that it's is crazy. playing in that shot. It's really. crazy and, looking. Oh, it's crazy. It's a, it's a, it's one of those moments when you go, Oh, this show is not like anything I've seen before. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's wild to look yeah. at that thing. I have pictures of me holding it. I have pictures. I think, I think Chris sent it, took a picture and sent it to Catherine. I think, uh, <laughs> holding her. I don't think she loved up. it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think she loved she it. She wasn't thrilled. Uh, <laughs> no. uh, yeah. <laughs> that was pretty uh, crazy. That was pretty crazy. Crazy. But, uh, but yes, you guys are in that, that strip club scene. It's a powerful yep. scene. Chris plays it. I mean, couldn't have done it better. Um, and, uh, and then we're in, we're getting close to that, that final scene, um, which is slightly different than, uh, than the book. Um, but we get some information and Sean Gunn crushes it. Chris crushes it. I love the dog in there. The, I mean, everything. <laughs> the dog, that piece of casting was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's all the music, the music yeah. in there. That's another one. Uh, what starts Ooh. playing and he's just in that, I mean, that scene is is, is pretty yeah. cool, and yeah. what a good sport Sean Gunn is to go through that. Oh man, and and you know I saw him at the premiere, and I and I let him know we used almost all of take one. Wow, yep. in that interrogation, mm-hmm. almost all of take one. He crushed that first take, mm-hmm. just yep. like nobody's business. Absolutely crushed it. And you feel, and that, you know, this is a one where we were, you know, pulling from the book and, and again, trying to honor the spirit of that book. This like notion as Reese is confronting these people who killed his men and his family, that some of these people do not belong on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. They just walked into the wrong <laughs> place yeah. and they did something they thought they could get away with. But Reese, as this kind of embodiment of consequence, shows up on the doorstep. And that's what I think is so powerful in that scene is Chris is just in total control. Saul, uh, a.k.a. Sean, like he's trying to push back. He's a very smart guy, smooth talking guy. He's trying. And then he realizes, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. I I have no play here. I'm not the same as the man sitting across from me. And so there's a a kind of tragic inevitability Mm -hmm. with how that interrogation is going to end. We, we spoke, um, to, to an interrogator, uh, Dan did, um, the, the husband of, of one of the writers in our room, Mm -hmm. um, as he was building that scene, I remember Dan sent it to me. It's like a seven page dialogue scene. It's incredible. And, um, and man, the actors just freaking ran with it. Chris and Sean just ran with it. And and one other thing to point out before that is this is the episode I think where um, Taylor gets to have a, a lot of fun. You mentioned the the moment on the on the golf course, but the scenes between those two guys in the ho- in the motel yep. room. You know, man, the the, the Bucatini line, which the, is yeah. all Dan Shattuck, love right. that, um, and. Uh, and then that little switch that flips in Ben when he hears that there's a reporter involved. Yeah. Yeah. And the way that that Chris has to assure him. Yeah. She's an asset. Mm-hmm. I know which category to put her in. Right. Freaking awesome, man. Yeah, like you just nice. feel the the history between them. And then uh, the Big Lebowski line. Oh, my gosh. You're not going to the end. <laughs> just pure just Pratt. Big Lebowski, are you? Pure, pure yeah. Pratt right there. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Love, love that final moment. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, it's, it's a, this one really, I think, features some incredible performances, uh, including Mr. Carr uh. and uh, – in our LA scene. Not, not, and, not that uh, much of a stretch, like I said, but, uh, <laughs> I mean, we get easy day in there, you know, which is like, yeah. a, you know, a seal, a seal thing to say. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, on the bed, they have, they're laying out all the, the tools on the bed, Ooh. you know, and that scene they're, they're, you know, and, and, and Ben gives Reese a little out, you know, asking, you know, let me take this. Um, and, uh, Reese, no, not letting him do it. And then that, that line you talk about, and actually I have it written down right here. And, uh, you know, Reese says, there's evil in this world. It's our job to look it in the eyes because most people don't have the balls. That's our job. That's the job. We do it. All you have to do is pay your taxes and stay out of our way. It's like, dude. And powerful. that's what I'm, that's what I'm talking about. Watching that, that Chris have that monologue, having that moment between Reese and Saul and 
and Dave, like you said, when Saul finally realized, like, I'm done, you know, there's no, there, there's no out from this. And, yeah. and you, you know, and then there's the way that, that Reese chose to do it. There was a bit of compassion in there. He, yes. he had, you, yeah. you know, he, he had that moment with him, like, I'm, you're, you're going to die, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you a little bit of a break, probably more than you deserve, but I'm going to, you know, all of that, there were so many emotions mixed into that. And, and that's where I say, just watching that happen. I knew like there, there's this is so special watching this happen right now. And I, I honestly believe that I think that's my favorite scene of the entire show. I oh, really do. so good. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which is why I jumped to it the first five minutes yeah. of this, <laughs> <laughs> this talk, but so great. So, so great. Oh, wow. I yeah. love it. Yeah, when we yeah. have Reese loading out in this one, we got Tomahawks yeah. in this one, which I think you guys have at close at hand. Which uh, I don't know what you, I don't know what you're, know talking, what you're talking about. about. <laughs> I don't keep a tomahawk with me, yeah. Jack. Oh, no. I don't know. That's, that's my yeah. emoji. <laughs> Speaking of assassin, like mine has a little wear on it right there. But uh, oh goodness, oh, oh goodness, I'm gonna go put that tell. back. Yeah, oh goodness. Back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, so great. I love you know all of this, and uh, you know, like I said, I couldn't be more thrilled with how all of this turned out because of the time, energy, and effort that you guys devoted to this for a couple of years. I mean, it's just, that's just, it's humbling. It's humbling to me. Um, so we get the Tomahawks in there and then we have a little golf cameo too for the golf fans out there. Oh, uh, Bryson. Yeah. Yeah. Bryson. So is that, that was yeah. a Chris thing, right? That was a Chris thing. That's a Chris connection. And, and one of the coolest moments was just off screen watching Bryson, Chris, and Taylor who's a hockey player, so it translates very well to, to golf, crush balls. I crushed them um, in between takes. It was nuts. Those three drive the ball like nobody's business. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, so that was a big get. Big get. And Chris came out, even though he's not in the scene, he came out, you know, that day that that Bryson was working and, oh, and cool. did a huge shout out to everybody. Awesome. Uh, it, was, it was epic. Oh. Man, that is just too cool. Too cool. And then, uh, I mean, I love also when Chris, when the legs come over the balcony and he drops down. Yeah. That's one of my favorite. That's one of my oh, favorites. You know, it's such a good one. Such control, good one. right? Control. It's all that clean suit, everything. Yep. All about control. Mm-hmm. Yep. The whole yep. thing. And then we get answers or blood at the end. Oh, yeah. So great. Mm. That's I dig, great. I, yeah. I, I dig that. And, you know, that's one, the, the Eccles is opened up yep. there uh big nod to uh, you know iconic piece of gear from yep. the book in the terminalist universe and um in that final uh shot you know that's one where people you know might not realize this but you shoot all night all the time and those guys have to do that scene right in like perfect light Mm-hmm. And Jared, you know what this like is like as an actor. You're chasing light, which means you get yeah. one, maybe two takes at most per setup. Mm-hmm. And um, and it it looks like some almost like uh, from The Outsiders. If you've mm-hmm. seen that awesome, incredible movie, um, it just it it's got such a unique palette to it. Uh, MJ and Armando just crushed it with that. Their whole teams, mm-hmm. uh, grip, lighting, all these guys. Every, again, you mentioned it before, Jack. Three hundred people are putting their effort and passion into it. Yeah. And then we get that drone shot, and then I love what Ruth did with the music there as we go into credits. It's a rocking song. Outlaw Country was a huge influence on the sound of this show. Uh, the the guitar is very much kind of Reese's instrument mm. in this show, and we turn it up a notch. Because we know what's coming in yep. episode four. Yep, we get the uh, get the fire uh, in there, and I use fire very deliberately in my yeah. in my novels. So yes. I'm very primal about it, of course. And uh, and uh, yeah, you get the weapons case opening. Darcy Eccles, the Eccles Legend rifle that uh, Gary Tools tours uh, again from Extreme Props got. I mean, I don't think Night Force even makes that scope anymore. And he got a he got oh, one wow. on there, and you know they just went above and beyond all that. And uh, it's coming out in the next episode. It's. Uh, uh, Reese just get, got a name, got another name and, uh, you know, oh, this is awesome. I love it. Awesome. I love it. So episode four will open with that. And, uh, man, thank you guys 
for doing this again. This is just too cool. I'm learning new things in every one of our episodes here, which is, uh, which is so much fun. I'm going to go back and watch everything, uh, again here and, uh, and, you know, I'll be able to take a little more from it, even though I was intimately involved throughout this whole process. There's little things that I'm picking up here and there that I'm going to, uh, definitely key in on as I'm, uh, as I'm watching it again. So thank you guys again so much for doing this. It, uh, it means the world to me. Sir, thank you. Thank you. Man, and thank everybody else for listening to the Terminal List Podcast, an ironclad original series brought to you by Kansas City Cattle Company, veteran owned and operated. If you like the show, be sure to leave a five star rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me at Jack Carr USA, follow at Digilio Films as well on Instagram, and we will see you in episode four.